In this video, we'll be talking about Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS. Amazon ECS is a highly scalable, fast container management service that makes it easy to run, stop, and manage Docker containers on a cluster. You can host your cluster on a serverless infrastructure that is managed by Amazon ECS by launching your services or tasks using the Fargate launch type. For more control, you can also host your tasks on a cluster of EC2 instances that you manage by using the EC2 launch type. ECS lets you launch and stop container-based applications with simple API calls, allows you to get the state of your cluster from a centralized service, and gives you access to many familiar Amazon EC2 features. You can use Amazon ECS to schedule the placement of containers across your cluster based on your resource needs isolation policies, and availability requirements. ECS eliminates the need for you to operate your own cluster management and configuration management systems, or worry about scaling your management infrastructure. ECS is a regional service that simplifies running application containers in a highly available manner across multiple availability zones within a region. You have the option of creating EC2 clusters within a new or existing VPC. After a cluster is up and running, you can define task definitions and services that specify which Docker container images to run across your clusters. Container images are stored in and pulled from container registries, which may exist within or outside of your AWS infrastructure. The first components of ECS are containers and images. To deploy applications on ECS, your application components must be architected to run in containers. A Docker container is a standardized unit of software development containing everything that your software application needs to run, including code, runtime, system tools, system libraries, and any other tools you might need. Containers are created from a read-only template called an image. Images are typically built from a Docker file, which is a plain text file that specifies all of the components that are included in the container. These images are then stored in a registry from which they can be downloaded and run on your cluster. In this diagram, you can see how a Docker file is related to a container image and how a container image is related to a container registry. So a Docker file is used to create a container image, and then the image is published to the container registry, several of which are Amazon ECR and Docker Hub. The next component of ECS is task definitions. To prepare your application to run on Amazon ECS, you need a task definition created. The task definition is a text file in JSON format that describes one or more containers up to a maximum of 10 that form your application. It can be thought of as a blueprint for your application. Task definitions specify various parameters for your application. Examples of task definition parameters are which containers to use, which launch type to use, which ports should be opened for your application, and what data volumes should be used with the containers in the task. The specific parameters available for the task definition depend on which launch type you're using. The following is an example of a task definition. The first parameter in this definition is the family. When you register a task definition, you give it a family which is similar to a name for multiple versions of the task definition, specified with a revision number sometimes. You also need to specify a container definition. This one you can see is built using Nginx. You can also see that this particular task definition requires that it be Fargate compatible and that it uses AWS VPC for its network. It also designates CPU and memory allotment. The next components of ECS are tasks and scheduling. A task is the instantiation of a task definition within a cluster. After you've created a task definition for your application within ECS, you can specify the number of tasks that will run on your cluster. The Amazon ECS task scheduler is responsible for placing tasks within your cluster. There are several different scheduling options available. For example, you can define a service that runs and maintains a specified number of tasks simultaneously. Next are clusters. When you run tasks using Amazon ECS, you place them on a cluster, which is a logical grouping of resources. If you use the Fargate launch type with tasks within your cluster, ECS manages your cluster resources for you. If you use the EC2 launch type, then your clusters will be a group of container instances that you manage in EC2.
An ECS container instance is an Amazon EC2 instance that is running the Amazon ECS container agent. ECS downloads your container images from a registry that you specify and runs those images within your cluster. And finally, the container agent runs on each infrastructure resource within an Amazon ECS cluster. It sends information about the resource's current running tasks and resource utilization to ECS and starts and stops tasks whenever it receives a request from ECS. The following diagram shows how container agents operate within the ECS infrastructure. What you'll notice is that Amazon ECS sends its scheduled tasks to the Amazon ECS cluster. Inside this cluster are multiple EC2 instances, each with an ECS agent. These are blah, blah, blah. Once again, it's the ECS agent on each EC2 instance that's responsible for starting and stopping tasks, as well as sending metrics back to ECS. And that about wraps it up for the basics of ECS. So if all of that makes sense to you, feel free to move on.